You are listening to a High Voltage Radio Network podcast. Find more at HighVoltageRadio.com. This podcast is a member of the Place to Be Nation family. Visit us at PlaceToBeNation.com, the only place to be in your pop culture world. Welcome to the Kings of Sports, the program that's changing the game one show at a time. With your host, Nate Milton. Yes! That boy's good. And Marcus Vandenberg. What? So sit back and relax, because you're now Down with the Kings. Welcome to the Kings of Sports, the program changing the game, one show at a time, a.k.a. the world's most dangerous sports show, a.k.a. iTunes' longest running with the episodic sports program produced and hosted by two or more African Americans that are not affiliated with a major network. I'm your host, the Godfather, Nate Milton, and we have a big show for you guys and girls this week. It is... Uh, the official start, I guess, to the road to WrestleMania for the Kings of Sport. Uh, it's going to be a short trip, uh, but uh, hopefully it'll be a good one. Uh, we've also got a lot of hoops to talk about this week, of course. First week of March Madness is uh, coming to a close. We're recording this on Sunday afternoon. So uh, by the time we get through with today, one week of the tournament will be in the books. Uh, so we, we got a lot to talk about, about that. And uh, who knows? We might even get into... Uh, into some pizza. Uh, but speaking of pizza, let me bring in my co-host. He hails from the City of Angels. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Marcus. Better ingredients, better pizza. <laughs> so now we cool with Papa John's fam? Vandenberg, what's going on, man? Who who said we're cool? I mean, you, you, you boy, the big fella. The, the big fundamental is is uh is down with uh, Papa John's now. I, you know, I, I can't, I can't hate on chat for getting this money. Yeah. And what is it with Shaq and companies? And I don't want to disparage. Well, I was going to say I don't want to disparage Papa John's, but I kind of do. Uh, <laughs> what is it with Shaq and these lower mid-card companies he hooked yeah. up with? <laughs> First it was Radio Shaq. The general. And, and then it was, uh, which I think he just hooked up with because of the name thing. Mm-hmm. And now it's Papa John's. Yeah. Somebody's got to, you know, somebody's got to do it, right? Uh, if, if, gotta- if not Shaq. It'd be someone else. Probably someone yeah. else not black. So, yeah, look at it that way. <laughs> It'd have been a Chris Tapp Porzingis. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, we, we got our own unicorn here. Uh, I don't even know where I was going with that segue. But uh, you, you heard the man in the background. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, he's a friend of the program. He's not even a guest anymore. He, he's part of the extended Kings of Sport family. He is uh, the host of the 20 Twin Twin, which just released the Tulsi Gabbard episode this past weekend. Uh, and he's got a new project that we'll talk about later on in the show. Give it up. Also from Los Angeles, the professor, Christopher Marquis Sealy, KME. How you doing this week, brother? I am doing great. How's it going, y'all? Good, man. You, 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 you putting in the order for Papa John's? Papa John's is disgusting, man. I I, I try and um, it's it's just not good pizza. Um, he, like I I can put up with mild racism, and if the food is good, that's why I still eat at Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A, man. Chick Fil A. Yeah. Yeah. Chick Fil A is undefeated. Yeah, Even gay yeah. people eat at Chick Fil A. That's how good Chick Fil A. Yeah, I know the one in West Hollywood <laughs> is like I, I thought they were boycotted. I go there, and then there's a line like wrapped around the damn. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, I can't. I can't mess with Papa John's. <laughs> yeah, pa- if Papa John's were good enough, maybe, maybe they'd have they'd have a claim to to winning back the the black vote, so to speak. But no, nah, like it's too greasy. Like the only good thing about Papa John's to me, the garlic is sauce, the, uh, the sauce. Yeah, that's the cool, garlic right? sauce is, is hitting. Everything else is just average pizza. Right. Yeah. 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 That's- and like. When you get through eating Papa John's, it's almost like, you know, you got to take a Rolaids or a Tums. And yeah. speaking of Rolaids or Tums, Marcus Vandenberg, watch the Segway Magic. It's very much like this year's NCAA tournament because it's very chalky. Mm. <laughs> done. I'm done for the whole segment. 
This is why you. This is why you're the professional broadcaster of the two. <laughs> um, but yeah, Marcus. Like, I got to be honest. Like, I don't want to come on here and lie to the people and mm-hmm. pretend like I've been super excited <laughs> about this tournament. Like, I'm excited about teams and individuals. You know, particularly Zion Williamson yeah. and seeing what he's gonna do. But I don't know. This year, I haven't been. Maybe it's because I got more stuff on my plate this year. But I just hadn't been as excited about the tournament as I have been in years past. Did you do a bracket? I didn't even do a bracket this year. Same here. I didn't do a bracket either. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. What I, I don't know. It, it feels, well, I think for me personally, sort of working in sports is sort of, I don't want to say sour me to the tournament, but I think you view it differently. You view it as, okay, this is four days of work, not four days of fun. Um, but Thursday morning rolled around and I was like, I don't, I don't even care to do a bracket. And, um, I've watched a good portion of the tournament just being in the office. And, um, I couldn't tell you anything the first three days that really stood out in terms of a, of a game. I mean, it's been sort of, eh, um, Thursday, Thursdays used to be like the one of the best days Thir- in sports. Man, like that I'd, first day at the I remember being in, in school, being in, in middle school and high school, and would um, would try to sneak into classrooms that were showing the tournament during lunch and stuff. It was like it was a big deal. And yeah. now, and and that, and that was when you had one game on. You didn't have all four games on. You had to sort of ride with whatever CBS wanted to show you. Mm-hmm. Now that you can watch all the games, it's sort of like, all right, well, unless your team is in it, you you don't have that same, I think, investment into it. What about you, Chris? You, have you been excited about the tournament so far? Mm-hmm. Mildly. Um, I'm, I'm, to my old alma mater, uh, uh, the University of Tennessee is still in it, so I'm kind of like looking out for them. Zion Williamson, I'm just – Praying that he somehow ends up on the Lakers next year. Oh, uh, you know, wishful, wishful thinking, I know. I'm just, uh, but I'm not really the tournament. I haven't been invested in that thing for a while. Um, it's it's because like I just find with college lately, the guys that um, I think are going to go to the NBA and be stars just aren't really doing that anymore. So it's kind of hard for me to um invest in it has the that, uh i was gonna say the, was gonna the say one thing me. exciting thing is job ja morant that that's been mm. the one standout mm-hmm. mm. even though murray state got destroyed yesterday by florida state yeah i uh, saw that i think john ja morant sort of secured himself as the number two pick based on his performance against marquette uh he had triple double only the ninth triple double in march madness history um, he's just a very, and I don't think, you know, people weren't watching Murray State before this weekend. So, no. uh, Jaws, yeah. he's a very explosive, hard, <clears throat> sort of a, a guy that, uh, one of the Murray State coaches discovered, um, just a, you know, a, a guy who's probably, you know, made himself a whole lot of money this season, uh, played college basketball as a sophomore. And I'm, I'm glad you brought the money, Marcus, because I've got two, theories as to why I don't feel like there's a, there's a lot of excitement around this tournament. Number one mm-hmm. is the lack of upsets, which we already talked about. Like, you know, there are maybe some mild upsets here or there, but it's not, you're not getting that Cinderella team this year. Uh, yeah, no Cinderella yet. Uh, well, Irv- Irvine could be the one if they beat Orton tonight. I, I don't see that. But right. even, I mean, we'll take that, I mean, Orton's a 12, so you, you're going to have a quote Yeah, and, and I, I would say Oregon's Cinderella. the only reason to me, the only reason Oregon's at 12 is because they were missing Bull Bull for so much of the season. Yeah, and, and the Pat 12 was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Not the, and and yeah, the only was, reason why Oregon is in the tournament is because they won the Pat 12 tournament. Right. They were not going to be in at-large, so that's why they're they're also at 12. But, yeah, we, we have a 12 versus a 13 tonight as the lone late game at, at 940 Eastern. So yeah, I'm sure I was no going to say, like, there's not game. too many double-digit seeds still left around. The, the, after this weekend, I, I don't think we'll we'll see too many. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, though, Marcus, is speaking of money, the I don't even want to say scandal because it's not like this is news to anybody that's been following collegiate athletics over the years. But the idea about you know the 
the NCAA and the scandal in terms of uh, – uh, recruiting and, and, and college players and, and who's getting paid under the table and should college kids get paid over the table? Should mm-hmm. they receive a stipend? That that age old argument still kind of cropping up right before the tournament. I think people just people will be invested when we get to the Elite Eight and the Final Four because those are the marquee events. But I think early on, I don't feel the appetite from the average common fan that you have in years past. Yeah, it's and, and even then, I think. It depends on the matchups. You know, God forbid if Duke loses tonight. If if yeah. Duke is out, that's really going to kill a lot of the, I think, yep. the the general fan sort of watching this tournament. And, uh, you know, not that not that baseball is as popular as March Madness, but baseball starts on Thursday, which is the, uh, the first day of the, the Sweet 16 round. So um, I, I think you're going to have maybe a little less eyeballs on the tournament this weekend with the return of baseball. And um, as we get closer to the end of the NBA and NHL season. So, um, and then for wrestling fans, the yep. final four weekend is WrestleMania weekend. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm not going to be watching much basketball that, that Saturday in New York. And then that Monday, which is the final four is also usually the best for all the year. Yep. And it's crazy, though, because like you're talking about the enthusiasm you used to have, Marcus. I used to be so hyped about this time of year. Not only would I fill out uh, an NCAA tournament bracket, I'd fill out a bracket for the men's and the women's, and mm. I'd fill out an NIT bracket. NIT, and I was that look hyped. at you. <laughs> I was that hyped about the, about the postseason basketball, but now I'm like, mm. if it's on, like, like I'll watch after we get through recording tonight. I'll watch whatever games are still going on but it's not like i don't have that investment that i used to have in years past by the way um speaking of tennessee chris yeah uh, iowa has uh come all the way back they were down 25 (laughs) damn (laughs) yeah it is now a one point tennessee lead and um all right continue on as i watch this game all right, yeah, there's going to be a bunch of depressed people on my timeline today, my uh, Tennessee folks. I had no <laughs> idea you you grew up in Knoxville. I went to high school in Knoxville. So, uh, yeah, I, I was. So I did, I did half my childhood in Los Angeles, half of my childhood in uh, Knoxville, yeah. Okay. And then, um, and uh, yeah, so I, and I went to UT for um, a good year before mm-hmm. I fell out. Um yeah. <laughs> How'd you like not so? It was okay. It's it's not like, you know, I like I'm back in LA so I obviously mm-hmm. didn't love the place, but um it was it was it was cool. It gave it taught me how to interact with um red state people and mm-hmm. um showed me like, you know, cuz even in LA, you, you know, um, now, without getting too far off a of subject, people can get into an L.A. bubble where they think the world is like L.A. Um, and Knoxville showed me that it that it wasn't. So, um, but yeah, you go in the um, University of Tennessee. I was never a big fan of the football team, but the but the basketball team I always paid attention to. Um, and uh, yeah, man. So you're saying you had to when you went to class at UT. You had to work twice as hard just to keep up with the other students. No, I didn't do that. <laughs> Is that that's a little that's a little foreshadowing. To, yeah, thanks, babe. yeah. To the next segment. Working working hard is something I just did not do at UT. Mm. Um, that that place is a crazy crazy party school, um, and uh, yeah, I, I, work was just not in my vocabulary in those days. Before we uh, wrap up the NCAA talk, Marcus, uh, do you think that uh, maybe from a from an audience standpoint, from a viewer standpoint, do you think it's Duke or nothing? Is, is that what I'm hearing you say? If if Duke somehow gets eliminated this round or the next, that will kind of, other than the, the teams and their fan bases that are involved in the final, that'll kind of dissipate the audience for CBS. I think so. Um... You know, looking at some of the teams left, Gonzaga, not historically a TV draw. Um, 
you know, you'd have Michigan State, LSC, which would be a fun matchup. Uh, yeah. you'd, UNC might be Top Hill, yeah. your, your, your best backup choice yeah. if, if Duke doesn't make it. Um, I don't think UVA is really drawing people like that. Uh, mm-hmm. Purdue. So, yeah, it, it, Kentucky. Maybe, maybe Kentucky. Maybe, but this isn't the Kentucky teams of past where I think, you know, most people didn't tell you anyone on this year's Kentucky team. Mm-hmm. No, I don't think Houston, so, so. Houston's in it, which is a surprise. Yeah, R- yeah. Ronnie will be watching at least. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that'll wrap up our, our NCAA coverage for this week, and we'll, we'll have certainly have more to talk about next week. But, Chris, you talk about that L.A. bubble. I oh. think the Lakers bubble has burst. Why don't you speak on that, sir? Okay, I'll spend some time on this. I the Lakers are bums this year, um, like they were last year, and like they were the year before. At, at what point at did the they become before. bums though? Because because early on in the season, I thought they were high hopes. For and Lakers. They, when, when LeBron got hurt, they became bums. Come on. Yeah, when when LeBron got hurt, they became. Here's the thing with with all that. I do think, um, and I might be in the minority, but I do think that if the Lakers were an Eastern Conference team. LeBron with those bums, they'd be number four, three or four. I, I truly do believe that. I think the Western Conference is is just not a conference where you could have LeBron out for as many games as he was out out for, and then just come back and be relevant again. Um, and these guys are just not good. I mean, we we like I thought I always thought. That um, Lonzo Ball was was a not Lonzo Ball. Well, Lo, well I guess they're a package deal. But I'll, Lonzo and um, Lavar, um, Lonzo, I, I never thought he was a, a quality pick at number two. I just didn't. I um, I saw him at UCLA, and um, I, did, I I never thought he was that much better than J- Jordan Farmer. I've said that numerous times. I thought he was. What was what he was, I thought he could be not like a focal point. He's better this year, but still, I think at this point in his career, he is where he is. He's at. And I think we need to probably get rid of him and then just get rid of some other cats, too. And, you know, there was one person we got rid of that I wasn't that happy about. But, yeah, who was that? Um. Man, I can't even think of this. That's Zubac? How rel- Zubac, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, it, it is what it is, man. I'm, I, I gave up. The minute Le- LeBron got injured, I, I knew I knew our days were numbered. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I like think the – uh, Marcus – the LeBron thing, it would not surprise me if we found out after the season that he did, in fact, tear his groin completely. Mm. And that's why, you know, it, it went from a day-to-day to a week-to-week to he's out 20 games type injury. Um, mm-hmm. but I think a combination of that and a combination of these Anthony Davis trade rumors. I think, you know, you have young guys on this team, and if you have them sort of dangled out there in these these trade deals and in the headlines, I think mentally – that does impact your game. And, um, you know, I think that probably didn't help chemistry. I think Lonzo Ball, the numbers have, have, have proven that the team is better when he's on the floor and he's been, you know, he's done for the year. Um, so I think it's a combination of, of things that did not go right for this team. And, you know, I think Laker fans, the smart ones knew that this was going to be a long-term process. This was not going to be, uh, a first year we're going to win the title type situation. Um, so I think I, you. Oh, go ahead. I thought we'd at least get number the playoffs. I thought they made the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. What, that's what I was hoping for them. I was, and I, I think hope you know, change the world. But if you yeah. take out the injury, I think they would have they would have made the playoffs. I believe if yeah. LeBron was healthy, even in, you know, even with Ingram going down and Lonzo going down, I think. If LeBron was around for those games, they would have figured out how to at least sneak in. But um, with Ingram's situation, his health situation, I think he's not going to be tradable. Um, no. So that, I think, makes the idea of them moving Lonzo more of a possibility, especially depending on how this draft goes. Let's say 
you know, let's say the Lakers somehow get the number two pick and they can go after John Morant. You know, what do you do then? Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the free agent situation. Um, Do you think they even make that pick, though? Do you think because, yes, this is a process, but it's also a process with a with a window because LeBron yeah. only has so many peak years left. Do you mm-hmm. think they would think about, you know, and I'm speaking of Magic and uh, Palenka, packaging that pick with some of those younger players in order to bring in a bigger name to team up with LeBron for the short term? Well, I think they would use free agency to do that. I think they, if they were to package – let's say Lonzo in, a, in their first round pick to move up, I think they'd be moving up to get a Zion or to get a John Morant or to get an R.J. Barrett. Um, I don't think they would use that to then bring in a, an older free agent who's got years on his deals. I, you know, I think you can get those guys this offseason. There's enough guys out there. Even if, they, even if you don't want a KD or don't get a KD, I think you get a Clay Thompson or something along those lines and sort of build around those two. So, Straight on. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no, no, thank you. <laughs> but they're both clutch sports now, so that that's also an interesting dynamic. So, yep. Uh, it's going to be an interesting off season again for the Lakers, and uh, the pressure is now back on not only LeBron but also Matthew Johnson, and Rob Palinka to deliver on what they've sort of been promising in terms of getting that second marquee player to play alongside LeBron. Yeah, I always thought this was a three year three year plan. Not only yeah. in terms of getting the Lakers right, but it's it's not just on the Lakers. It's also the decline of the Warriors. Yeah. And right. I yeah. think the Warriors, still, like, I think they'll win the title this year. Next year, depending on who stays, who goes, we might start to see the decline. But if you're the Lakers, you want it to sync up. Like, I know everybody talks, Chris, about, oh, I want to beat the best at their best. That ain't yeah. real life. You want yeah. to you want to get the tip. You want to get the bag yeah. any way possible. So if you're the Lakers, you want to be rising and ascending while the Warriors are going on the on the downward slope. Right. Yeah. The league has changed. Nobody cares about getting the title. Everyone wants as much help as they can get, yep. um, and as mu- as much money as they can get. Um, and it just is what it is. But 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 that but that help aspect is is there and the lakers are just not as they're not playing that game right now they've they've got lebron um and a bunch of bums um and you know and i i'm, I'm calling all of them all of them bums man i um <laughs> i think snoop dogg <laughs> that rat he did was 100 percent right i i don't think that those guys um you you should you should your record shouldn't sink that badly because this guy missed some games but um the way that's that's i think that's again the western conference well well i think i think it comes down to coaching number one right yeah um, yes because you if you look look at the clippers right the clippers roster i mean i, I don't i'm not gonna call those guys bums but they yeah. they don't have marquee superstars and Doc, Doc Rivers has led this team a team that was you know you can say they're they were trying to tank but they they traded Tobias Harris away for it was it you know it's a good deal for the future but they traded one of their top guys away during the season um mm-hmm. that has not slowed them down at all and they have guys so, you, that so you're are, putting this on Luke oh I totally I totally put part of this on Luke yeah the, the, yeah, the, the young guys have not developed the way they should be mm-hmm. and that that starts with coaching, and you know I, I think that's the other component of this off season for the Lakers is there will be a new head coach, and that is a, probably a hundred percent guarantee that that's going to happen. It's, it, it's a matter of who are they going to go after? Is it going to be like a Ty Lu, um, someone else that LeBron is comfortable with, or someone? <laughs> Chris, Chris doesn't want Ty Lu. <laughs> no, it's got to be like a Mark Jackson or some somebody with some kind of. Like credibility, Ty, Ty Lue's got a he, ring, though. Yeah, yeah, he's got a ring with LeBron. <laughs> See, this is a problem I have with with these guys that are labeled as good coaches. They're not. They're okay coaches that had great players. Like um, Ty Lue had LeBron um, at LeBron's peakest of years. Um, 
like did you, what's the the bum that you that was a coach of Miami uh, Spostra? Spostra, Spostra um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like no, it's uh, get a, get get a good coach, get somebody with some clout under their belt that Doc, LeBron Doc Rivers, respect. Doc Rivers, mm. you know, I, I would. <laughs> Yeah, I would say don't don't I, I don't think LeBron is going to play. LeBron thinks he knows more than these young coaches. I mean, he just does. Mm-hmm. I mean, he'll probably pay, play good for uh, Ty Lue. But um, you say LeBron needs somebody that not that anybody could check LeBron, but he needs somebody with a little bit of uh, authority, a little bit of gravitas. Yeah, too. somebody that's got a resume of their own. That that um, it like that that LeBron is gonna respect their direction because um, there's he I mean history has shown there's not too many coaches like that in the NBA like LeBron all of his coaches he's he's thought that you know he thinks he knows more than you know and he probably does you know I'm not even saying it's it's a wrong assumption but he he doesn't respect their direction, I think with someone like an older like coach like a Mark Jackson or Doc Rivers or you mentioned someone older like- older coaches. Mm. I wonder if Phil Jackson's ever been tempted mm. to call the Lakers. Well like that that's what yeah. they need. I mean yeah. that's you know I know he's in up he's seventy three <laughs> and I'm sure he's in, he's enjoying retirement but um, and I don't know his situation with Jeannie, how that would complicate things at the moment. True, but, uh, true. You know, if you're if you're Phil and you you see LeBron and you're you're getting you know your you one last chance at a at another superstar, and just thinking like just as a as a coach, let's say you've coached Jordan, Kobe, Kobe and Shaq, to be honest, and then. LeBron and to win championships of all three of them, that would be pretty fucking cool. Yeah. So, but I also don't know what, you know, what his health situation is like if he wants to even be bothered with the grind of coaching. But if, mm. if you, if you're looking at, this is a, a short term deal. Like we have two years to get this done. I would go after Phil. Interesting. I, I like that. I like that. So, uh, have you, have you, have you, uh, Felt the therapy here, Chris? Have you got it off your test? Are you are you good now? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, 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 it, it is therapeutic to kind of talk about this and <laughs> like toss it away, like my old preachers used to say, "Pray those sins away and toss them into the sea of forgetfulness." And that's kind of what I want to do with the Lakers for this season <laughs> and just enjoy the rest of basketball. Mm. Are you talking about the playoffs? Vance? Yeah, yeah, the playoffs. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm always cool with the playoffs, man. Like you know, even if my teams aren't in it, it's still interesting to watch. I do think it's going to be the Warriors again. I, I do think the Warriors have. I think it's just going to be them. You know, yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I mean, there's a chance that it won't be, but um, and as a matter of fact, I'd be happy if it isn't. But I, you know, I'm bracing myself. That's the thing about the NBA like playoffs. Like even if you don't have a dog in the fight, so to speak, it's still exciting. So uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, we'll be watching out for that in, in, in the weeks to come. Uh, although you know Marcus has predicted, I mean, he just threw out the possibility of Phil Jackson coming back. We'll see if if he can get on board with LeBron and the posse. Yeah. Uh, so trying to think of a good transition out, but uh, oh yes, oh yes. We are on the road to WrestleMania, but uh, we're going to take a detour. We're going to, you know, get the GPS, recalculate Marcus Vandenberg, because we're not even worried about WrestleMania. Next segment, we are talking about the road to Kofi Mania. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> so don't go anywhere. Everybody watching on the Patreon feed will be right here. Everybody listening on the classic audio version will be back after a quick break. Uh, so yeah, stick and stay because we got more Kings of Sports right after this. What? 
What in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? What's going on, party people, and everybody out there in podcast land? It's your man, Nate. And uh, we'll get back to the show in just a little while. But while we got some time, I just wanted to let you guys know the three ways you can get in touch with the Kings of Sport. Way number one, you can tweet us on Twitter, because that's, that's where people tweet people, apparently. You can hit us up on Twitter at KOS underscore POD. That's CosPod on Twitter. Way number two, you can email us at thekingsofsport at gmail.com. That's thekingsofsport at gmail.com. And finally, you can hit us up on our Facebook page, facebook.com backslash thekingsofsport. So there you have it. Those are the three ways you can get in touch with us. You can leave feedback. You can join the discussion. Three ways you can be down with the Kings. We good, Marcus? Do we, do we have to pay more G for this? Because I ain't got G-Funk money. Welcome back to the world's most dangerous sports show. Follow the danger online at facebook.com backslash the kings of sport. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Back on the Kings of Sport. Ready to close up shop for yet another week. But before we do, we got to give you what you want. We got to give you what you need. And what you want and need is ratchetness. And that's what Segment 4 is all about. But unlike, you know, your typical Segment 4, you know, we're not really getting into the ratchet stuff. You know, no R. Kelly this week. No Donald Trump this week. You know, no Kanye this week. We're not talking ratchetness. We're talking wrestling. Uh, we are about two weeks away. From the biggest show of the year in professional wrestling, WrestleMania, of course, coming from New York. Uh, the people on the classic version can't see me doing air quotes. Uh, <laughs> coming to you from <laughs> New York. Uh, but yeah, one of the big stories, Marcus Vandenberg, is the rise of one Kofi Kingston, who, if you go back two months ago, we didn't even know where his place was going to be on the card. Was it going to be a battle royal spot? Was it going to be something tag team with the New Day? And now he's in a position to be in one of the higher profile matches on the show. Yeah. Um, we can just assume he's going to be wrestling Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania for the title. Yeah. I think the question now is, will he actually win the match? Mm. Or is this just going to set up for another rematch down the road? <laughs> uh, what do you think, Chris? Because I, I know this is something, and we'll get into some of the deeper conversations around this here in a little bit. But just looking at this from a pro wrestling fan standpoint, uh, 
What have you thought about kind of the build to this? And do you think they'll actually pull the trigger with Kofi at WrestleMania? <sighs> okay. With the Kofi stuff, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll st- save the, I'll save the deeper stuff for later, but um, if I was going to go by history, I would say he's not winning the title at WrestleMania, but um, I must say that WWE Raw, SmackDown, both shows, all the WWE programming outside of NXT is like the most dystopian shit on the planet to watch. It's like all the bad guys like are just one up in the good guys every fucking week. I'm like, like it, there's no levity at all. It's like every single week, week I watch this shit where, whereas back in the day when stone cold would be going for a title at WrestleMania, this dude would be most of the time he would get, one up the bad guys like maybe the week before wrestlemania the rock or whoever he was fighting would get the drop on him but going into the show he he didn't look like such a punk (laughs) um and kofi um they've they've and people are behind him still which is a good thing but uh, he looks like an absolute chump and you know vince mcmahon just it, it it just reeks of um, past times in this country that I, I'm not a big fan of. Mm-hmm. Uh. Marcus, respond to that, Marcus, because I've got I've got a thought too, but I want to hear what you, uh, you know. What you've thought about the story, so I'm I'm just more curious of who's booking this story. Yeah, um, because we know that Kaz has left the company. Um, he was the only. Black writer at the time on the staff. Uh, Dave Schilling has been hired by the company, but I don't know if he started yet. Or, and, and if he has started, yeah, I think he started after this trophy thing really took off. Um, so he's, I guess he was the other black writer that is, that's currently around. But it, this is a – what they're doing is it's a delicate balance of, of trying to uh, blur the lines between wrestling and reality when it comes to, to race and – racial uh, relations in this country and just sort of how uh, uh, black people sort of feel in general. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's been really interesting to see how, how they get around this. I mean, they have not mentioned race at race at once on during this, this run, but it's implied. And, uh, and they did call the new day young bucks on an episode of SmackDown. That's no, there's nothing subtle about that. That is a racial racially charged term it was used in the 1800s that's what they used to call black male slaves and Subtle about it to us yeah 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 and then and they and, 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 subtle to us but to the quote-unquote mainstream wwe universe yeah that, yeah to them it's like well that's the thing i was talking to some dumbasses on twitter oh he was re- referring to Cody and the AEW and stuff like motherfucker, man. When when has the last when have you ever heard Vince McMahon refer to wrestlers as young bucks? Mm-hmm. You know, like that's never happened. That was done on Vince McMahon was like in his late thirties, early forties in the fucking eighties when Reagan tried to use that term as a dog whistle for black men. I'm not like come the fuck on, man. Like, and I, again, I don't necessarily have a problem with it if Kofi's going to win. If you're putting me through all these, like, racial dog whistles and um, just all this dystopia, have the guy win the belt at Mania so I could be, so I could move on with my life. Hopefully he gets a a slightly better run than Ron Simmons got with the WCW title. Oh man. Um, But you know, hope, yeah, I'm just, I'm just hoping that like, you know, that like the show needs to be good and good guys need to win. Like I like, and I think WWE doesn't understand the good guy, bad guy concept too much. I think when, when you're dealing with like fiction, you're supposed to, like the bad guy 
you're not supposed to want the bad guy to beat the good guy, but you there's some you, on some level you like the bad guy. Like people like the Joker, people like Lex Luthor, but they're not wanting the Joker hmm. or Lex Luthor to beat Batman, but they like them as villains in their place and they like to see them get their comeuppance with with what they're doing with Kofi um, and uh, Vince McMahon and not just them but Baron Corbett there's a list of things people mm. pe- people want to, people this shit is getting old man like you can't keep having Vince McMahon do this every single week and expect people to stay invested in it I just I just think that that that's very um, that's a very ignorant thing to expect. Yeah, I think in my opinion, like I've done so far, they've done a good job telling the story. I do think Kofi needs to get more and maybe we'll see him get more. Yeah. You there, you there, Nate? Oh, Nate froze up. Yeah. Um, well, Nate unfreezes. I, I think it's interesting that or these next uh, couple. There he goes. Nate, you're coming in and out, Yo. man. Nate, your Skype sucks. All right, it's the white man. He's trying to. He's trying to shut us down. Yeah, that's big man. <laughs> Who do these bucks think there are? Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, something coming in now? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Oh, and you're gone. Mm-hmm. All right. We will add Nate back in. Um, I think it's interesting that Daniel Bryan is in this spot going against Kofi because, yeah. as we've seen with a lot of the sort of response from the locker room, like Daniel Bryan would fit into that forgotten category if you weren't right, the champion yeah. if you were in the storyline uh, so personally I just wonder what he feels about sort of being the antagonist in this role because I'm sure deep down he's, he sides with Kofi he understands where Kofi's coming from mm-hmm. but he's sort of been put in this, in this bad spot where he's you know he's quote unquote, well they've done good about making Vince the, the true bad guy and sort of taking some of that heat off of Daniel Bryan yeah, because um, you know they haven't associated directly Daniel with with Vince yet. Yeah, and, I, and I'm kind of like I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing either. I, I do think that there needs to be more heat on Daniel Bryan. I know da- Daniel Bryan is is probably not going to be comfortable with like all the dog whistles and stuff mm-hmm. like that, but I do think he needs to be the focal and I think the role he's in as like, you know, now he's calling other guys a B plus player. I think that makes him a hypocrite to a certain extent. And I think that's a good place to go by because I think they, I don't think, I think Kofi is the best opponent to make Daniel Bryan look like a true bad guy. I think other people, Daniel Bryan is going to get a grunt of those chairs. I think with Kofi, most people like Kofi, you know, most people want him to win. Whereas with the, you know, AJ Styles, if he was feuding with him again, you'll have half of the people or not half, but like a quarter of the people still cheering for Brian. But I think with, and with Kofi Kingston, most people are going to be cheering for him against Brian. So, yeah. um, you know, just because of the newness of it all. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what they would have done if they, if let's say, even if a Styles were champion. Uh, you know, I I think with Styles, there's definitely just knowing mm-hmm. sort of what he's like outside the ring and sort of some of his thoughts and you know yeah. his his beliefs. I would love to see an AJ Styles that is cranked up to eleven, just who he is as a person, yeah. and how that would have played out against Kofi. Yeah. Um, someone like Randy Orton, who you could easily picture in that role. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think they're trying to make the, the best of what they can with, with Daniel. And um, uh, it, 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 I think that we're getting to the point where in order to have this match, they're going, there's going to be some type of either walkout or protest or there's there's been mm-hmm. enough of this yeah. chatter online with other wrestlers that are now chiming in on the, what the New Day have said since last week. And uh, I think that's how we get to this match as opposed to, you know, the New Day just attacking 
events, and which would be probably not the best lit for a couple of reasons. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be, and um, it would um, like um, I like I wouldn't mind them attacking like Vince McMahon if like Vince McMahon like smacks one of them in the face or something mm-hmm. and then they and then they attack them but i don't want to just see them attacking this like old, kevin owens yeah, yeah yeah something like that but not just i don't want to see them attacking this old white guy um you know like that because that's not our answers to everything you know mm-hmm. so and that and that's where this this angels is very it can be very problematic depending on who's writing it because there are some Stereotypes that you know these guys are sort of facing as as black men going against this right. you know this white man. So you know, in terms of a going into media, the most interesting angle it would be this. I think I think this is yeah. also uh, leapfrog the the women's match. Yeah, where I feel like that's sort of convoluted at this moment. Yeah, it was like um, the the women's match was interesting at first, and then like it fell off of a cliff. Like the I think probably the moment they insisted that Charlotte had to be in this match, which I understand for because I I think they want to have two women on the roster to say they main evented WrestleMania, mm-hmm. and um, that's just not. Um, and that's just not Ronda Rousey because she's probably going to leave for a little while. Yeah. But but at the same time, it's still just very convoluted. It doesn't. It's like why would you? Like it's, it doesn't make any sense why Charlotte's not going after Oscar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Welcome back, Nate. Hey, Nate. Nate is now. He's frozen again. Yeah. Oh, there he is. He's kind of <laughs> moving. You got a Max Headroom thing going yeah. on. Talking. <laughs> Nate, we should probably wrap this up since your internet is uh, crapping out here. All right. Nate is, Nate is now frozen again. He laughs and then he, he freezes up. This is all great podcast material here. If you have the video yeah. version of the show, you can see Nate just sort of staring at you. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We will wrap this up. So uh, I think we talked offline. Kami, you are not going to WrestleMania. Um, you are going to watch the WrestleMania show from home, though? Um, yeah, I'm going to watch it from home. Um, I'm going to... Um I'm going to the AEW event, uh, so that was that was those were the choices. And last year was the same thing. I picked All In over uh, going to WrestleMania. So, um, but it, like I said, I I will feel some some so, sort of regret if Kofi um, wins the title there, um, and uh, and that's about that's pretty much it, man. Yeah, so. So you're going to double or nothing? Yeah, I'm going to double or nothing. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to I should that. be out there as well, so. Okay, I'll see uh, you there then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but we will wrap this up. K and me. Plug away your, your projects and uh, the Patreon show and anything else you got going on. All right, so uh, just check me out on uh, the 2020 twin. Uh, we're still talking presidential candidates. I um, um, I don't have a, a person I'm supporting just yet. I'm, right now, I'm still whoever gets the nomination is who I'm going to support. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also we're doing um, this show, uh, NWA, Nubian Wrestling Advocates. Uh, it's going to be about black wrestling, black wrestlers. We'll go over some black wrestling history. The first guest on the show is Dr. Um, Julian L.D. Shabazz. He, um, he's a black wrestling historian. He wrote The Black Stars of Professional Wrestling. Huh. He's appeared on Live Audio Wrestling. He's appeared on BET, ESPN, um, just talking black wrestling. Um, his The last um, uh he, he only has a second edition of his book, Black Stars of Wrestling, that came out in 2010. 
So, um, but we'll be talking to him about current stuff and, you know, the state of black wrestling. And he's really good about noted, noticing some of the, the subtle nuances and the racial aspect of black wrestlers, not just in WWE, but in all forms of wrestling. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Real, real quick, what are your thoughts on Mr. Beto O'Rourke? Um, I like him. I've got my uh, Beto shirt here, uh, but I don't. I don't know if I'm voting for him for president. I I, I spent some time in in Texas um, stomping for him for Congress. Mm-hmm. I, I I'm not Congress, the Senate. I knew um, I knew he wasn't gonna win but you know still wishful thinking and you know if he wins I'll I'll vote for him I think he's a I think he's a good candidate he knows how to raise money he knows how to um engage people and that's kind of where we're at as democrats what democrats like need to do now is just um in the past I wasn't for the grandiose promises you couldn't keep now I kind of think like that Trump his angle is let's just promise a bunch of bullshit and figure it out later. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think the Democrats should go quite that far, but I do think that the Democrats need to have some like solid issues that they're going to stand on top of and um, that they want, that they want to engage people to vote on. Yeah. He is. I think he's very polarizing for the Democrats Mm -hmm. and I, I can, I can see why some people might not be sort of down with him. Um, yeah, yeah. It's like, do you want to win or do you want to, you know, com- complain about, you know, he and that and there's, yeah, like you said, there's reasons to not like him, mm-hmm. but there's reasons to not like anybody. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, so, it's just is what it is. All right, and you can find me on social media at Marco Will, M A R C O W I L L. Uh, Nate, who we lost in the process, he's at Nate Mosaic in the number eight M O Z A I K, and uh, you can find him on uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram, and you can listen to his other uh, his other podcasts as well. And uh, the Patreon, patreon.com backslash the Kings of Sport, where you can uh, view this video and you can uh, listen to KME's political shows and. Uh, we have our interview with TJ McLoon that we did last month. Um, we should probably have a, another roundtable, or not roundtable, another uh, interview coming soon, hopefully, with uh, a guest to be determined. And oh, yeah. I let think me that's pro- it. plug my yeah. Twitter real quick. Go ahead. Yeah, my uh, Twitter is uh, K M E Z Does It. That's K M E A. Oh wait, is it Z? K M E, the letter Z, and then does it? D O E S I T, um, and then Christopher Marquise Ely across all platforms. That's K R I S T O F F E R um, E A L Y. That should be good enough to find me. And uh, yeah, thank you, uh, thank you again, Marcus. Thank you, Nate. Wherever you are, off into the abyss. No problem. Uh, and. Yeah. Uh, for the the listeners of of post wrestling, I will be at the the live show that John and Way are doing the day of WrestleMania. Um, so looking forward to uh, to seeing those guys in person. Um, always a that's K me. That's we, we that was in San Jose that one year we yeah, uh, yeah. we met at, at a John and Way live show. So um, yeah. always a good time. They seem a lot more official now. We have a, a comedy show compared to a comedy club instead of a. Uh, Forgot where we were. Some type of bar we were at. Yeah, last it's like time. some like, outdoor barbecue spot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> that is uh, two weeks from today, so we will be there at that. Or I'll be there at that, holding it down yeah. for uh, for Nate. So we will close out this show. Uh, we will be back next week with another new show, another new edition of the Kings of Sport podcast. So for uh, for KME and for Nate Milton, I am Marcus Vandenberg, and uh, we will catch you guys next week.
Well, that's all for this week's edition of the Kings of Sport. Be sure to come back next week for an all-new episode. You can leave feedback for the show on Twitter at KOS underscore POD or via Gmail at thekingsofsport at gmail.com. Don't forget to like and rate us on iTunes and tell a friend. The Kings of Sport is a production of the Mosaic Podcast Network. Whether you like it or not, he's back. D-A-double-D-Y, that's X. Let me tell you something, Mean Gene. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to leave it all on the mat. Because that's what I do when I get it done so I can do it. Yeah!